Hey folks, it's John with KGTropicals.com, episode 6 of KG Q&A. This is exciting. If you want to get your questions answered in this series, there's the email address right there to send your questions to. On the last video, I answered five. That's like a record. Um, doing these as often as I can, the questions are rolling in. So keep them coming and you will get your questions answered in this series. Uh, this question first comes from Alex Latvinsky. I love your channel on YouTube. I learned so much from your videos, but I have one question, and that is how do you sex your cichlids? Do you use the venting method or do you just look at them? I don't vent them. And the reason why is because a lot of the fish that we have are either really big and it's blaringly obvious that they're males or females. Uh, or they're so small that they're even difficult to vent because they're so small. Uh, venting is a good way of identifying cichlids. It's easier on some than it is others. But, um, you know, peacocks and haps, and bunas are always going to be difficult to sex. I mean, I, I don't care how you look at it. Um, most of the bunas that you're going to find in the store are going to be in the two inch range uh, for sale. And there's, they're kind of small and it's, it's tough to look at them and vent them uh, because of this because of their size. But with peacocks and haps, um, usually you know when they get to the two and a half inches or so, there's things that you can look at and tell whether they're males or females. I mean, there's going to be little bright spots. There's going to be the males are going to grow faster. Uh, the males are going to behave a little bit different because even at that young age, they're trying to impress the females. So uh, you're always going to be able to look for those signs. And I, I do that, I trust that more than I do venting. That's not me saying venting doesn't work, it absolutely does. But, you know, we deal with fish that are either really big or really small. And you don't need to vent the big ones, and the small ones are too small to vent. So, um, we just look at size, we look at color, we look at um, their growth rate. You know, if you get a batch and a bunch of them are big and the others are like half the size, well, that's a good indication right there of what their sex is. So there's that. Now Derek Shields, he's bought from us a couple times. Um, I bought a yellow lab about a, about a six months ago and she has not grown at all. I know people say that it's caused by stress in the tank but nobody picks on her. Need your opinion. Thanks Derek. Um, you ever seen a Emmanuel Webster? No. I know, in, I know for a fact Derek is a teenager so he has no idea who Emmanuel Webster is. You ever seen a person that's just really small? Uh, I'm six feet tall, 220 pounds and I'm kind of embarrassed by that because I had a back injury and I gained a bunch of weight but anyway um, you know Tom Cruise, I know who you know who he is, is 5'7 he probably weighs about 40. All right sometimes people and fish just grow bigger than others. Um, even though Mbona's yellow labs more particularly can get up to five inches, that doesn't mean they're all going to. Sometimes you're gonna have a runt and it's just gonna be small. I've got a yellow lab that's like four years old in my 240, about three inches. I mean, sometimes they just stay smaller. It's not like you're, when a fish is four years old, you're gonna give her magic food and it's gonna make her have another growth spurt. I mean, pretty much they're gonna be at their full capacity at that point, the full size. So you might just have a runt and that's okay. I mean, sometimes they're smaller and um, there's no magic formula to do anything about that. I mean, if it's an inch long and you've had it for six months, then your fish is really a runt. But uh, I mean, if the fish is eating and behaving normally and it's just not growing, well, what are you gonna do about that? I mean, you're gonna get rid of the fish, you know? I mean, there's, <laughs> there's not a whole lot that can be done uh, to change that. You might just have a runt. Jim Turner, um, all right, this one got confusing because he actually sent it to my other email address. I have two cichlid tanks and one tetra tank. My water always has a yellow tint to it no matter what I do. What causes it? 
And how can I clean it up? My water is clear, but it looks like pee. <laughs> okay. The very first thing that comes to mind for me is driftwood. Uh, that's just what my gut's telling me right off the bat. Do you have driftwood in the tank? Uh, it's not like I can look for an answer from you. But, um, you know, driftwood is one of those things that if you put that in your tank and you haven't removed the tannins from it by boiling it or soaking it uh, before you put it in the tank, it can slowly release those tannins for months and months and months and keep your water yellow. It's almost like putting a tea bag in the water. Um, so that's one of the first things that comes into mind. Um, I know here in King George, if you're on well water, there's a very high iron content in the water here in well water in King George. Uh, I used to live in a house that all of the appliances were white, but they were actually all yellow because the water stained them yellow. Uh, I mean, it didn't come out of the tap and look yellow, but eventually your toothbrush would start turning yellow. Your coffee mugs would be yellow. It was really bad toilets and sinks. Um, so your water might have an abnormally high level of iron, but typically if you have that, there'll be an odor to the water and a bad taste. Um, so, you know, it could be that. It's probably unlikely that it's that because uh, I, I think with an iron content that high, your fish probably wouldn't be too happy and you'd probably have a hard time keeping them alive. So, um, oh, I went to my sister's house and got water for my fish tanks when I lived in that house, by the way. Um, the other thing is, this is going to be blunt, but your tank just might be dirty. Um, I know that, that sounds ridiculous, um, and you're obviously an officer in the military. I see your picture here. I mean no disrespect, believe me. Um, but uh, you might just have a, you might, it might be dirty. Um, you might not be vacuuming the tank properly, removing all of the debris from the gravel. Um, are you changing your filter cartridges, putting fresh carbon in there? There's people, you could have a debate all day long. Some people say carbon is a waste of time, but I happen to believe in it. Um, are you using carbon at all in your tank? That's something that can definitely help it out. Um, it's a difficult question to answer with no information whatsoever. Uh, but, you know, there's a few things to think about and hopefully that can help you. Um, consider the source, consider what you have in there, if you have driftwood in there, if you have not removed the tannins from it, take it out of the tank, boil it until the water stops turning black. Um, and then uh, also maybe, maybe introduce some carbon into that. Uh, that could certainly help. And uh, thank you, sir, for your service to this country. Um, it was a very small picture. I'm assuming it was a military uniform. It might have been. You might be in a fire department or police department. Either way, it doesn't matter. You're still serving this country. So thank you, sir, and thank you for the question. Robert Lamond, he ordered from us last week, so I'm happy to answer his question. Uh, hi, John. I'm starting to breed some in bonus, and I was wondering if you should let the female go full term and release the fry naturally the first time she breeds, or is it okay to strip the eggs slash fry the first time holding. Nice job on the videos. Enjoy watching. Thanks, uh, Rob from Ontario. All right, I'm thinking of a different person here because I don't ship to Canada. So um, I swear I ordered, I, I shipped fish to a guy with this exact same name. Anyway, <laughs> um, you know we don't we don't wait. I mean, it, you know when we have a fish that go, has her first spawn, we we'll go ahead and strip her. Um, it's not anything that's harmful to the fish. Uh, when you remove the eggs from her, when you strip the eggs from her, she doesn't go searching through the tank looking for her eggs. It's almost like they instantaneously forget about them. So it's not like you're doing damage to the fish or hurting them psychologically or anything like that. At least I don't know. Um, so we don't wait. I, I see your theory, letting her do it the first time and, you know, uh, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. I mean, I guess my answer to you is do it whichever way you want to do it. Uh, stripping the female, not stripping the female, letting her naturally release, either way is fine. I've said this in other videos. If I was doing this for fun and wasn't trying to put food on the table, I would let them all go full term. Because it's just more fun watching it that way. And the anticipation, waiting for the fry to get released and stuff like that. If you're doing this as a hobby, doing it for fun, let her hold them. Let her do her thing. Let her parent those eggs or those fry for the first few days after she releases them. 
that's fun to watch. So if you're looking for efficiency, stripper. But if you're looking for something that's going to add to the hobby and be a lot more fun, then then let her hold them. What's wrong with that? You know, there's nothing wrong with that, um, and it's fun to watch. So, all right, we're at 10 minutes, so I think that's pushing it a little bit to go with another question. Let me do something I swore I was not going to do, and I will proof or pre-read. I'm not going to do that one next. So, I'm going to cut it off there. Emails are coming in like crazy right now had a couple of videos upload today and we got the new shipment in so the orders are going to start coming through it's a crazy night i'm going to go home now so i thank you all so much for watching if you want to get your questions answered on this series there it is right there send your emails to that email address and i will put them on the list and you will get your question answered unless it's something just completely over the top i won't answer them but i'll have to edit those out but you know keep it keep it you know don't go overboard with the questions and but I'll answer any kind of questions you have whether it's about the fish business keeping fish whatever it is that you want to do I'm having that much fun with this that I'll answer just about anything so thank you all so much for watching I'm gonna go home I'm starting to sweat it's time to go have a good night <laughs>